Uy. I almost lost track of time. This is my garden. I've been out bicycling today. So I just about losing daytime, daylight to record this. You see, I want to fix it with this uh, painting drawing right here. It's done with gouache and soft pastel. So there are certain areas that I am uh, interested in spraying so it won't smear off. And there are certain areas that I'm kind of scared what's going to happen. I am fond of this hair over here. It's partially done with a soft pastel to make like a back highlight and then gouache on top of it. I'm just wondering, you know, like would the that highlight disappear? Okay, but there is uh, no way around it. You'll just do it. <sighs> I can immediately tell. Can you see how it got pushed back? So now we let to we gotta like let it dry up and see if it survives. Looks to me like it's coming back a little bit. Okay, but it got hit. <laughs> so uh, at least there is some partial spray on that area there. So let me just focus on this facial area because that's where the most pastel are represented. Okay. Oh my god, I'm waiting. <laughs> I hope that the you know the white will fight through the spray and stay there but let me turn off the video and we come back when it's dry so i'm inside it's dried i did lose the highlight that i had painted here which is a bit of a bummer oh the light is getting better if i show my sleeve in the footing footage but over on all it needed to be sprayed so um I'm just looking I lost some of the highlight here that was looking like bright in a different way yeah but over and all it needed to be sprayed so um I couldn't do it without the spray I just wanted to record this and then what I'm looking for is how the gouache got affected by the spray and I see nothing. I mean, I can't even tell on this area here that it was just exposed to some sort of moist, maybe a little bit here, but uh, could it be like, could this be from the spray? I don't know. But you know what? It's so minute. I don't see like I spattered water or anything on it. So uh, I would say from here, I will continue spray fixative mixed media pages where I used a mix of uh, gouache and pastel. So yeah, that was just what I was going to experiment. <laughs> Thank you for watching along. Bye. Yeah, okay, this is like turning into one of those you had like one job videos where <laughs> I was supposed to like hours ago to quickly go through my uh, scavenger hunt because um, Ruth, thank you so much, left a comment on one of my videos where I months ago uploaded the intro to my scavenger hunt hosted by Janet M. Young. And I was supposed to just watch a couple of YouTube videos just to get in the mood of making a video <laughs> and now I've been binge watching this uh, dog trainer and uh, you know I don't even have a dog okay <laughs> let alone a, an aggressive dog <laughs> but I have apparently binge watched uh, because it's important several hours of this uh, dog trainer who is training dogs and time is now just so close to my bedtime so now i have to do it but anyway i had prepared 
working in scavenger hunt in this um, field node Midori style. It's actually a uh, Midori. Uh, what? Is, oh, oh my God! I'm looking for the word. Um, what is it called? Ah, oh, okay. It's a Midori notebook. Yeah, and it's contained my um, prompt list on the first couple of pages, and I did a very in intensive upload months ago <laughs> about the intro because there's like a hundred prompts and it's a lot so I was thinking this year that I wanted to uh, use some of the prompts to do an intro so I had an excuse like it just gave me a path to use a, a, a lot of prompts so I think I'm just gonna browse through this and uh, you'll see a lot of strange pages but they make sense if you look at the prompt list because I'm using letters and uh, getting into subjects that uh, makes me uh, being able to cross off uh, a prompt so I made an intro once upon a time, a crafty lady at Monkey Island started a fun New Year's Eve tradition. Can a crazy lady be something medieval? If so, lucky me because that's a prompt. Monkey Island, yes, it's real, it exists. Look it up. Anyway, this is her, Janet M. Young. <laughs> she got entangled on her mind, you know, in her brain. So I gave her a entangled brain. Her nose is a block of solid cheese, but that's a story for another day. She lives on Monkey Island, and why there? Well, there is a quote about birth of a feather flux together, so I guess that's why she got attracted to Monkey Island. This is actual artwork sent to me from Janet. It's an art coin from the Christmas greeting card she made in 2023. I am so grateful that Janet sent me a Christmas greeting where she included a very beautiful art coin because how else can I show how awesome an artist she is. She is very detailed oriented and I love watching her streams while I sit in art and listen to her fun way of viewing life and art. And that's like the nicest way of saying that I love her snarky brain. During many years, Janice has kept a journal. This is dated like a planner. It looks like a Miguel Ruiz black notebook with a soft cover 300 sheet. So it's a brick and it could be why she calls it the beast. And it's my depiction of how one of her beast journals uh, can look like. She usually make an awesome decoration on the cover by using a mosaic of handmade papers she then cuts up. So I tried to do my version of that artwork, that wonderful artwork that Janet decorate her beast with. This is a little example of a page spread from the beast. Janet made small drawings of daily things like her breakfast and her iced coffee. Then in the summer of 2023, she got a book on how to draw monsters and they soon made their appearance in the beast. So what I did was <laughs> that I uh, stopped at one of Janet's uh, live streams and paused the camera when she flipped through her beast and made a perfect copy of one of her page spreads. So if she flips on to the 13th of May, 2023, this is how her page spreads look like. <laughs> Isn't it hilarious? And on this page spread alone, I am using a lot of prompts, like a border, washi tape, stamps. I'm drawing monsters. I'm drawing breakfast. I'm showing a book page. I'm showing clothing. So uh, yeah, there is uh, a lot of uh, prompts when I... In, in a page spread like this. Janet is really the boss of her sharp exacto knife and the ruler of her ruler. I mean, who else do you know who got their own ruler song? Don't worry, be happy. And that's the song that, you know, we write in chat when she flings out her ruler. 
I actually write Hakuna Matata, but that's a different story. <laughs> Gosh, she can even build the most amazing things that she feel is cut out of wood and heavy chipboard. Pen nip holders nicely decorated and very usefully designed. And she actually have sent me this in the happy mail, so that's why I included it. Oh, here it is. Hakuna Matata. And then I draw in a ruler. Seam and Centangle boxes are some of her amazing work. The Centangle box was decorated with Centangles and she was so generous to give away a beautiful box. I can't believe it. I think it was Dot Dorothy in the UK who won it. The postage alone, yet alone the time spent on creating made this a luxurious gift. Even Dee Dee was gifted a beautiful centangle box to store her huge collection of scenes. And let's talk about scenes. If you ever need inspiration to what you can create in a scene, you should catch the video on Janet's YouTube archive where she shows all her awesome scenes. Question is suddenly, what can you not put in a scene? In August 2022, Janet did a scene swap and so many sent in their fantastic take on the Mother Goose universe. And this is my, um, what I sent in and I think I have shown it a lot of times before. <laughs> but it's a uh, Mother Goose rhyme. Uh, and before I start the rhyme, these two monsters are talking to each other because this monster needs help from this one to visualize the the saying don't know any monsters named mother goose is she scary just do your part once upon a slime bird of a feather flock together and so will pigs and swine rats and mice have their choice and so will I have mine yeah, so that was like uh, the scene that I submitted. How to make a scene? You take a piece of paper and fold it like this and then cut the center out. And this was actually just an excuse to use the letters I, Q and H. <laughs> so I tried to, you know, make a story out of it. Oh, <laughs> which is why I need, yeah. And O right there. Oh, perhaps I should just mention the ATC swap Janet hosted in May 2021. We were a whole bunch who participated. And when Janet sent out the swap, she created a super cute, entangled ATC holder for all of us. And it was just amazing. Imagine the workload behind that. And here I uh, am making a pocket using a ribbon. And this is stuck. It's one of my ATCs that got like uh, foiled, foiling on it. So the foil, the foil is just uh, getting stuck to my envelope. <laughs> Typical. This is one of my ATCs on a tag. And in here is uh, an ATC created by Judy. Look how beautiful it is. It is just like three dimensional. Isn't it awesome? Yeah, I am so glad that I put it in an envelope to protect it from my own ferocious sticky scene. Maybe I should do like, okay, then it will stick to this page. Hmm, I'll just do like this. Last but not least, Janet is phenomenal to build her own watercolor boxes. I am the proud owner of such a box. She handmade it from scratch and filled it up with watercolors. And, oh guys, you know what? She hand built a wooden watercolor box and filled up the first tier of Mugello Mission Gold watercolors. So everything was just, uh, yeah, I, I, such a generous gift. I am still, you know, it's a, it's a, a precious procession in my collection. F can only stand for focus, you freak. 
X-rated and gnarly. I bet that when Janet decided that we should use the letters X for this year's scavenger hunt, she probably never saw coming that one of us would use it to describe her as X-rated and gnarly. But she is also the one who got a whole journal just designated to her gnarly quotes. Queen Janet is also known for her gnarly and funny personality. When streamers had issues with getting their camera to focus, she sent them a tag they could lay on the desk with a text getting straight to the point. Focus, you freak. <laughs> Remember this tag? I have always been thinking that it could be an awesome quote on a t-shirt. And it could. <laughs> Maybe now you got to know Janet a bit better after my intro. Wrapping up from my intro, this is the fabulous founder of the epic waster of time New Year's Eve tradition called the scavenger hunt. The madness started seven years ago and hopefully will continue forever. And I'm sorry to call her waster of time, but that's actually the way she described herself on her YouTube channel. So that's why I... <laughs> I'm so brave to call it that. It's not, you know, my own <laughs> wording. And then I try to draw her as a cartoon character because that's one of the prompts. And I put a bird on it. I draw the Focus You Freak t-shirt she's wearing. And, of course, a crown on her head. The founder of the scavenger hunt. Keep calm and, of course, rule on. And then... When I finished my intro, I had crossed out all the prompts that I managed to use for that. So I was writing down what prompts there were left. And then I looked at that page and then I was thinking, you know what, it went so well having a story to tell in the intro. So I wanted to continue that to have a way to use up the prompts. And it started because I made this page spread here thinking like now I'm getting like nowhere, you know, <laughs> like now the scavenger hunt is just going to be a cluster of crazy things that makes not really much sense. So now starts uh, the rest of my scavenger hunt built up around a story called The Missing Tenth Man. And once again, all the pages look so weird because I'm I'm using prompts. Once upon a time in Ganges. Oh dear. Ten men goes to the Ganges to take a dip in the holy river. They're walking there. This is like a, a city. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's been so long. <laughs> While taking a dip in the river, they hold each other's hands. But somehow forgot to hold their hands when coming out of the water. Once on the shore, the eldest man starts to the count. <laughs> I made a turban out of candy wrapper. He asks all of them to raise their hand and the count stops at nine. All are confused and each person takes a turn to take the count and they all count till nine. They frantically start looking for the missing tenth man. What the hell is this? I don't know what that is. A cap seller watching this and using scene give each of them a cap to wear. He asks the oldest man to collect and count all the caps including the one he's wearing. And lo and behold, there were ten caps in total. And that's the end of the story. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. 
And then I need to work with the, a wish list and the letter W. And uh, instead of making a, a wish list of what I crave for my endless collection in my art room, I was looking in the direction of all about the Ken Essentials. You know about those? It's from the movie Barbie. And the Ken Essentials to make it through life is that you need at least two pair of sunglasses and you have to wear them on top of each other. You need a book, not books, you know, just one book. And then you need three watches because the Chanel rule is put through. <laughs> this is so lame. Okay, the Chanel rule in real life is that when you, you decorate yourself and embellish yourself in, in your outfit and then you take one thing off before you leave your house. But the Ken essential rule is that you put three more things on and that could be three watches. Then you need a fa I need a fanny pack to carry on my uh, karaoke microphone. I need a fake fur coat with horse lining. I need rollerblades, head bandana. I need to know that I am Kenneth and got Kennedy. Okay, that was the most strangest <laughs> wish list ever. And here the 14th of March, I um, I finished my um, scavenger on, finished, and then this is the last page, and this is a roll off page, and this is just some artwork that inspired the, the cityscape, you know I made that Ganges uh, river city here. Oh my god, that's worth my scavenger hunt. Yeah, it's a mess. It's a mess. It's one of those journals where it just don't make any sense if you don't know about the prompt to begin with. I mean, flipping up on pages like this just um, made me realize that, oh, now I'm just going to sit and do uh, random things to put as many prompts on one page as possible. So I think it was a fun idea to link it to a story so Ruth that was the flip through of my uh, total scavenger hunt for 2024 I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching my channel and leaving a comment it really really warms my heart <laughs> thank you